Welcome back. The U.S. is waiting on an FDA decision regarding an emergency use authorization from a COVID-19 vaccine. The U.K. is already planning on distribution. This was after the country received the go-ahead. We know there are a lot of questions about vaccines, which is why Nine Health expert Dr. Pyle Coley was kind enough to get up early on a Sunday to join us. We always appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Coley, we wanted to first start with the emergency use authorization process. We know the FDA is meeting on Thursday to discuss the Pfizer vaccine, uh, but the UK already is moving ahead. So what's going on with the different timelines here? Uh, so the difference here, Anusha, is not in the science, of course, because we already have access to the data, but it's really in the regulatory review process. So in the UK, they actually take what the company gives at face value and make a decision based on that. But the FDA regulatory review process is certainly much more rigorous, even for an emergency use authorization. And they actually look at the raw data themselves, make their own conclusions, and then have this public hearing that we're having on Thursday in order to decide. So, you know, on one hand, obviously, we don't want to rush the regulatory review process and the FDA's process is considered the gold standard across the world. But on the other hand, with oh no, 2,000 Americans dying every single day, it does raise the ethical question of whether we should be moving a little bit faster to try to get this vaccine authorized. You know, we have this kind of tiered phased approach in Colorado with the general public looking a good couple months out from being able to access the vaccine. But for those who are wondering, will they need to get the vaccine if they've already had COVID? This is a great question, and the CDC doesn't officially have a formal statement on it yet, but my personal take is yes, you should get it, and there's some good scientific reasons for that. So the first is that not everybody who gets COVID-19 makes antibodies. We've seen that with the data. The second is that some people who make antibodies then lose those antibodies as early as two to three months after natural infection. And, you know, the coronavirus is part of the coronavirus family, which is a, a, a family of viruses that cause the common cold. So just like you can get the cold again and again, we have seen individuals get reinfected. So to protect yourself potentially against that reinfection, that vaccine may be a good idea. And finally, the third is we don't know if the reaction to the vaccine in terms of the immunity is stronger or more potent or lasts longer than natural immunity. And if that is a possibility, then certainly, again, the vaccine would be recommended. What do you think are going to be some of the main unanswered questions about the vaccines that we might not have the answer to before it starts being rolled out? Yeah, you know, this is a great question because this vaccine has been developed at unprecedented speed. So there's a lot of things, the question marks that still are lingering over our heads. The first, of course, that everybody asks about is long term data. How do we know what this vaccine is going to do to us in five or 10 years? You know, because it just got developed within the last year. And the answer, to be honest, is that we don't have data on that, but we can look historically at other vaccines. And based on that look back, we can tell that most of the reactions that occur tend to occur soon after vaccination within a period of one to two months, not necessarily years later. Now, of course, this is a brand new technology also. This is an mRNA technology that has not been used, so that does counterbalance it. The second question that's not really answered is about transmissibility. So, of course, the vaccine has been shown to reduce infection in the host and reduce severe infection in the host. But does it also prevent the host from transmitting the virus to somebody else? Or is it possible that they're still giving off virus but just not getting getting sick themselves? That's an outstanding question that, of course, has a lot of public health implications. And then finally, there's some special groups that I think we don't have answers in, like pregnant women, nursing women, or children. Now, of course, Pfizer and Moderna have enrolled children as young as 12 or 13 into their trials, but we don't have that data, and we certainly don't have any data at all in kids under the age of 12. So those groups are not recommended to get this vaccine at this time. And because, you know, in the meantime, it's still so important to follow the precautions when it comes to preventing the spread of COVID-19, I think people are still wondering when they might see what the holiday and Thanksgiving has impacted our numbers. When could we see that play out? 
Yeah, so we're about day 10 right now. So I think we are starting to see some of that effects trickle in, especially in some of the other states like California. We're seeing a sharp increase in some of those numbers. But really, the peak of those effects are going to come around day 14. So in about four more days, we're going to start to see the peak of those effects, and they'll last for about another 10 days. So I would say the next, you know, um, seven to 10 days are kind of the critical window as to where we'll see effects of Thanksgiving. But keep in mind, that's just Thanksgiving. If we now layer Hanukkah on top of that or Christmas or New Year's, you know, it just resets the clock and everything. We start to see those cases go up again. As always, thank you so much for the perspective and keeping us educated and all of the developments. They're all coming so fast. So we appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Coley.